Youth is a time when people often make rash decisions and mistakes. Sometimes these mistakes can have severe consequences, especially if a person finds themselves in a challenging relationship. Unfortunately, the situation I'm going to tell you about today ended tragically. This story began in 1992 when 23 year old single mother Krista, along with her three year old son Joshua, moved to the city of Tulsa, Oklahoma, almost immediately after the move. Krista got a job as a real estate rental agent in a residential complex. Things were going well and soon she met 22-year-old Joe, who worked at the fitness center in the same building. A romantic relationship developed between them, and Joe accepted Joshua as his own son. They started living together as a typical American family and later got married. Three years later, Krista became pregnant. On December 5, 1996, a week before Krista's birthday and a month before Christmas, a baby girl was born, whom they named Lauren. Krista always considered her daughter the best gift for all the Christmas holidays. The family was very close-knit and united, and Lauren's birth brought them even closer together. Grandpa Dusty, Joe's father, paid a lot of attention to his grandchildren and became like a second father to them. However, in 1999, the family faced financial difficulties when Joe lost his job due to downsizing. He couldn't find a new position for a long time, and the family lived on odd jobs. To find stable work, they were forced to move to Phoenix, Arizona. Although the couple perceived this 1,500 kilometers journey as an adventure, it was a serious test for the whole family. They had never seen mountains before, and now they found themselves at their foot, which especially impressed little Lauren. Lauren grew up active and fearless, loved singing, and regularly engaged in sports. At the age of four, she became passionate about football and loved playing as a goalkeeper. When Lauren went to school, Krista became pregnant with another child. Even before the baby was born, circumstances changed, and the family decided to return to Oklahoma to be closer to Joe's parents and get the necessary support. It would have been much more difficult to cope with three children. Despite the stress and difficulties of the first move, the family again dared to change their place of residence. On October 26, 2002, Krista gave birth to a boy named Dustin. In honor of his beloved grandfather, his birthday fell during the Halloween period, which became one of the family's favorite holidays. Every year, they arranged themed parties, dressing up as different characters. Lauren, the only girl among the children, became a real daddy's daughter and had an especially close bond with Joe. He even took her hunting with him, where he taught her how to handle weapons and track prey. In February 2005, a fourth child appeared in the family a boy named Tyler. Lauren spent a lot of time with her younger brothers, sometimes playing with them like dolls, feeding them, changing their clothes, and putting them to bed, but she never harmed them, and the little ones got along well with their sister. The family settled in the city of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, with a population of about 115,000 people. Although it was a relatively small city, it ranked fourth in size in the state. Broken Arrow was known for its low crime rate and was considered the safest city in Oklahoma. However, even this did not protect against the terrible tragedy that happened to the family. 2009 was a turning point in Lauren's life as a challenging teenage period began. Lauren started having problems associated with puberty, and the situation was further complicated by mental health issues. Concerned parents took their only daughter for a medical examination and the doctor diagnosed her with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. This condition affects the ability to concentrate and control certain impulses. Lauren was prescribed medications that were supposed to alleviate the symptoms, but instead, they only worsened the situation. Lauren became withdrawn and quiet, began to distance herself from friends and family. The situation was aggravated by the swine flu epidemic, which, although on a smaller scale, resembled the COVID-19 pandemic. It was at this time that the family's beloved grandfather became infected and died, which was a real shock for all relatives, especially for the children who were very close to him. This event caused new problems for Lauren, who began to inflict self-injury. Up to this point, Krista kept a family video diary full of happy moments. However, from now on, the cheerful and carefree videos were replaced by more somber ones, when her daughter began to harm herself. Krista recorded videos for several days in a row, trying to understand if new injuries were appearing. 
Krista could not figure out what was happening and why her daughter's condition was deteriorating. Lauren withdrew into herself every time the conversation touched on topics that were unpleasant for her and did not make contact. Sometime later, the relatives learned the real reason for the teenager's withdrawal. It turned out that recently Lauren had gotten into a new group of friends. Once she was left alone with an unfamiliar peer who coerced her into unwanted acts. This had a devastating effect on Lauren's psyche. Lauren did not dare to tell her parents about this. But when the truth was revealed, she managed to get help. Lauren was taken to psychotherapy sessions and was prescribed medication. Over the next few years, Lauren's mental state normalized. She became sociable and friendly again and found new friends. In 2012, Lauren was introduced to a guy named Zach Rain. They quickly got along and began to spend all their free time together. The teenagers even looked alike. Later, a romantic relationship developed between them. Lauren's family gladly accepted Zach. As he gave the impression of a kind and decent young man, Zach became like an older brother to the younger children in the family. The young people officially announced their relationship in February of the same year when they both turned 16, approximately in the middle of the school year. Lauren decided to move in with her boyfriend, leaving her parents' house. They wanted to rent an apartment, get married, and live as a full-fledged independent family. Lauren's parents did not share their daughter's enthusiasm for the idea of living together with Zach, considering them too young for such a serious step. However, they decided not to hinder the girl's independence, fearing to spoil the relationship and provoke a new wave of depression and self-destructive behavior. At the same time, the parents had concerns that because of the relationship, Lauren might neglect her studies. However, the daughter assured them that this would not happen and eventually received their consent. Shortly after the move, Krista, Lauren's mother, suspected that her daughter was pregnant, and this was the reason for the haste in the decision to live together and get married. When asked directly, Lauren replied that she was not sure. Then Krista took her to the hospital for a pregnancy test, which turned out to be positive. Although the news of the early pregnancy came as a surprise to the family, everyone supported Lauren and eagerly awaited the arrival of the child. Nineteen-year-old Lauren gave birth to a daughter. Edison, Maine. On March 22, 2015, Zach's parents also enthusiastically received this news, readily accepting the roles of grandmother and grandfather without any condemnation of the young couple. Despite the fears of her relatives, Lauren was able to complete her secondary education a few months after giving birth, and on July 16, 2016, she officially married Zach. After that, the couple went on a honeymoon to the city of Branson, Missouri. Outwardly, the couple looked happy, but in reality, Lauren had been struggling with inner challenges for years. The emotional wounds she had received in the past continued to cause pain, although not as acutely, which she hinted at in posts on social media pages. Lauren was determined to fight for the sake of her loved ones and daughter. Zach got a job to provide for his family, but initially, significant help was provided by the parents on both sides. However, by October 2016, the situation changed. In her posts, Lauren noted how difficult it was for her to constantly be at home alone with the child, complaining about the monotony and boredom of everyday life, and dreaming of going to work as soon as possible. Despite her boundless love for her daughter, the young mother strived for self-realization and shared these feelings with her relatives. At the same time, the couple decided to improve their living conditions. They proposed to their old friends. Connor Browner and his girlfriend, Alexandra Finley, to rent a more spacious apartment together, splitting the costs. This would allow them to save money and comfortably accommodate themselves, even with children. Soon, the two families moved in together. At first, living together was harmonious and fun. Everyone supported each other, communicated, and spent time together. On May 25, 2017, Lauren finally got a job as a saleswoman in a store striving for greater independence. At the same time, she continued to struggle with depression, which she confided to her mother. Lauren dyed her hair dark, wore black clothes and makeup, and her relationship with her husband deteriorated against the backdrop of her general psychological state. The couple of friends with whom they shared the apartment broke up and moved out separately. Zach, Lauren, and their daughter were left alone again and suffered from boredom. After a few months, the marriage began to fall apart. Zach returned to his mother, trying to defuse the tense atmosphere, 
but it did not help. The couple could not restore intimacy, even for the sake of the child, and that same year, they filed for divorce. Interestingly, after the official breakup, the former partners improved their relationship for a while, but not for long, therefore, they soon made significant changes in their personal lives. Left alone with the child, Lauren acutely felt loneliness and a lack of male support. She longed for new love, and it happened quite quickly. Lauren started a relationship with Connor, their former roommate. The shared experience of breaking up with partners brought Lauren and Connor closer, and romantic feelings flared up between them. This news deeply saddened Zach, who still cherished the hope of restoring the family. However, he had to come to terms with the choice of his ex-wife. By September 2017, the divorce procedure was completed. The parents agreed on joint custody of their two-year-old daughter, taking turns caring for her every week. This decision suited everyone. Zach's hostility towards Connor intensified due to his addiction to illegal substances. Gradually, Lauren also began to use marijuana. The apartment increasingly became a place for noisy parties, which the father of Little Edison did not like at all. He tried to influence his ex-wife but in vain. Conflicts between Zach and Lauren, as well as with her new partner, arose repeatedly. The girl's parents were shocked to learn that their daughter had exchanged her ex-husband for someone with a chaotic lifestyle. However, they hoped that over time, Lauren would calm down and perhaps renew the relationship. But contrary to the expectations of relatives, the situation did not improve. A year passed, and by the fall of 2018, Lauren's life was rapidly going downhill. During this period, she and Connor found themselves surrounded by a company that abused illegal substances. The young couple began to spend more and more time at parties. Additionally, Lauren made a new friend, Shanana, an extreme person who often provoked dangerous situations. Lauren's parents were very worried about these circumstances. It was then that a new profile of Lauren appeared on social networks under the name of one of her alter egos. It featured a depressive gothic image in black tones reflecting the girl's inner state. On the page, she wrote a lot about dissociative identity disorder, a condition in which a person's identity splits, creating the impression that several different personalities coexist in one body. It seemed that Lauren identified four such subpersonalities in herself. On October 26, 2018, Lauren was going to meet her mother to celebrate her brother's birthday. However, instead of a pleasant family time, a serious conversation awaited her. Krista expressed concern about her daughter's lifestyle but was unable to get through to her. The dialogue turned into a heated argument, after which Lauren turned around, slammed the door, and left. It was the last time her family saw her alive. The next evening, Blake, Lauren's friend, called Krista. He had agreed to give Lauren a ride to a friend's house so they could prepare for Halloween together but could not find her. This alarmed the guy, so he decided to contact her mother. Blake said that the day before, in the evening, he had met with Lauren and then took her to the nearest gas station. There, Lauren asked to be dropped off, explaining that tattoo artist Mike West was waiting for her. They were working together on the design of a new tattoo, which she planned to get done the same day at his house. According to her friend, he kept in touch with Lauren until the evening. She told him about the details of the tattoo and then suddenly stopped responding to messages and calls. This surprised Blake because usually, Lauren did not let go of her phone. Upon receiving this information, Krista panicked and wrote to her former son-in-law Zach and her daughter's current boyfriend, Connor. Zach confirmed that Lauren never showed up to pick up their daughter. Although she planned to do so, this news further alarmed the relatives. Krista was so worried that she immediately turned to law enforcement. The police accepted the missing person report and began an investigation. Unfortunately, in the initial stages of the investigation, the only lead was the testimony of Blake, not a very close acquaintance of Lauren. The detectives collected all the necessary information from the girl's relatives and friends and compiled a detailed description of her appearance and clothing on the day of her disappearance. According to them, Lauren was dressed all in black, a jacket, shirt, jeans, and boots. The police quickly managed to find Mike West, the tattoo artist Blake had mentioned. Mike confirmed that that evening he had picked up Lauren from the gas station and brought her to his home, where they were to finish work on the tattoo sketch before applying the design to her body. The man also reported that later, Connor, Lauren's boyfriend, unexpectedly joined them. 
Lauren assured that everything was fine and asked for permission to leave with him for a short while. However, after that, she never returned. Although Mike waited for her all evening, he never saw her again. The next step for the detectives was to talk to Connor, who seemed to be the last person to see Lauren before her disappearance. The guy said that on the day Lauren was getting a tattoo, he drove her in his car to the nearest Walmart supermarket, where she had agreed to meet some friend. After that, Connor allegedly went about his business. According to him, Lauren promised to call as soon as she was free, but she never got in touch. Connor assumed that maybe a friend or someone else then picked her up, so he was not too worried and did not immediately raise the alarm. The investigators noted some discrepancies in Connor's testimony regarding the exact timing of events that day. They decided to check his words more carefully and find out what really happened to Lauren near that supermarket. To do this, the police requested footage from Walmart's surveillance cameras, where Connor had allegedly driven the missing girl. Law enforcement officers received the video materials and began to carefully study them. Meanwhile, the detectives also spoke with Lauren's mother, Krista. The woman said that her daughter's relationship with Connor was quite troubled. At first, she was completely against their communication. In recent months, the couple had been quarreling more and more often, and the tension between them was only growing. Krista also reported that at the time of her disappearance, Lauren and Connor had already broken up and were definitely not together on the day he allegedly drove her to the supermarket. Lauren did not want to continue the relationship. She avoided meetings and communication with her ex-boyfriend. Therefore, the mother was very alarmed by the fact that it was Connor who turned out to be the last person to see Lauren before her disappearance. The woman did not hide her concerns about her daughter's ex-boyfriend, especially because of his addiction to substances and a tendency toward physical altercations. According to Krista, Connor had repeatedly raised his hand against Lauren, which was one of the reasons for their breakup. Therefore, she insisted that the investigators take a close look at him, as she was convinced that the guy was involved in her daughter's disappearance. However, Lauren's ex-husband, Zach, also fell into the circle of suspects. The detectives knew that he was very painfully experiencing the breakup with his wife and was jealous of her new relationship, which many of their mutual acquaintances mentioned. While studying the footage from the surveillance cameras in the Walmart supermarket parking lot, the police could not see Connor's car. There was a possibility that he simply parked in a blind spot. But Lauren was also nowhere to be seen inside the store. The detectives spent many hours diligently reviewing the video recordings but found no trace of the girl. This could only indicate that she had never been there, which meant that Connor had lied again. More than 48 hours had passed since Lauren's disappearance, a critical period after which the chances of finding the missing person alive rapidly decrease. Relatives were losing hope more and more. The girls' photos were circulated in the media, and the police urged the public to help in the search for the young mother. Suddenly, an anonymous witness called the police station hotline. He said that on the evening of Lauren's disappearance, he saw Connor arrive at his place. In his car, there were noticeable blood stains on the seats and floor mats in the cabin, which the guy tried to hide by throwing covers on top, but this did not completely mask them. When the informant was asked about the origin of the stains, Connor allegedly replied that he had recently hit a dog on the road. He claimed that he was forced to transport the injured animal in the cabin to deliver it to the nearest vet clinic which is why everything was covered in blood, but in the witness's opinion, there was way too much blood for such an explanation. The anonymous person admitted that at the time he did not know about the disappearance of Connor's girlfriend, so he did not immediately attach importance to this incident and did not contact the police. However, after hearing the news, he decided to report this suspicious information to the investigators. Upon receiving such information, the detectives began to consider Connor as the main suspect in the case. They decided to take a closer look at his biography and past. It turned out that the guy had already had problems with the law, in particular due to a minor domestic quarrel. In addition, during the arrest, he resisted the police officers. Less than a year before breaking up with Lauren, a serious fight occurred between them, during which Lauren called law enforcement. True, Lauren then decided not to press charges. So the conflict was hushed up. The detectives also found out that at the time of his ex-girlfriend's disappearance, Connor was already dating someone else. It seemed that Lauren's fate did not concern him at all. However, the investigators still summoned him for questioning to ask a few questions. This time, 
Connor changed his previous testimony, according to his new version. That day he took Lauren to Walmart so that she could buy needles for syringes. Allegedly, this was needed for injections of narcotic substances that Lauren planned to use after the tattoo session. Connor claimed that he was initially against this idea but could not persuade Lauren. After that, he allegedly just went about his business, no longer saw her, and does not know what happened next. Such discrepancies in the testimony only heightened the suspicions of the investigators. After that, he allegedly just went about his business, no longer saw her, and does not know what happened next. Such discrepancies in the testimony only heightened the suspicions of the investigators. Frequent changes in Connor's statements and new details that appeared in his stories all indicated that the guy was clearly hiding something. Moreover, the surveillance cameras did not record either his car or Lauren near the supermarket, and store employees also could not remember the girl. To track the suspect's movements, the police obtained access to his mobile phone data. It turned out that Connor was indeed near Walmart that evening but much later than he had previously stated. Around 10 p.m., while studying the surveillance camera footage, the detectives noticed that Connor did come to the supermarket that evening, but he was there with another girl who later turned out to be his ex, Alexandra Finley, with whom they had previously rented a place together. In the video, the couple was carefreely strolling through the store, buying up for Halloween, but among their purchases, a large number of cleaning products especially caught the attention of the police officers. This fact seemed very suspicious given the experience of the investigators. The detectives decided to talk to Alexandra about those purchases. Alexandra confirmed that that evening Connor called and asked her to help with cleaning the car. He told a story about a quarrel between two of his acquaintances that took place in the car's cabin. Allegedly, one of them was wounded, abundantly covering everything with blood. Then Connor took the injured person to the hospital, portraying himself as a hero. That is why the guy urgently needed cleaning products to clean the cabin, and he called his ex-girlfriend for help. Alexandra believed this strange story and agreed to go to the store with Connor and later helped him wipe off the dried blood stains from the upholstery and carpets. Having obtained a search warrant, the police were able to thoroughly inspect the main suspect's car. In the cabin, they found numerous traces of blood that someone had tried hard to remove. At that moment, no one had any doubts that this blood belonged to the missing Lauren. Judging by everything, Lauren had lost a lot of blood, so it was not possible to completely get rid of the stains. Experts who examined the scene concluded that the victim had suffered a severe injury and most likely died as a result of massive blood loss. Investigators carefully collected samples of biological material and sent them for examination. The results of laboratory tests later confirmed the worst fears, the blood found did indeed belong to the missing Lauren. When Connor was presented with this evidence, he once again changed his testimony. This time, the suspect claimed that he had picked up Lauren from the supermarket, but there was some girl with her who allegedly wanted to buy narcotic substances from a friend. Something went wrong, and that person suddenly pulled out a gun and shot Lauren in the head. Instead of fleeing the crime scene, the killer allegedly pointed the weapon at Connor and ordered him to drive to the nearest place where the body could be disposed of. The guy drove a little further and, at the direction of the armed stranger, threw the dead Lauren into a dumpster. At the same time, Connor insisted on his non-involvement and innocence. This version of events sounded just as implausible and confused as the previous ones. Moreover, it was extremely disappointing because the garbage in that area was regularly taken out. When the police arrived at the scene, the containers were already empty. However, traces of blood were found at the site which most likely belonged to Lauren, as well as her bracelet. These samples were also sent for examination. The examination later confirmed that the blood found was the blood of the missing girl. On November 5, 2018, the investigators tried to obtain a confession from Connor. The police did not believe the story about some drug dealer who allegedly shot Lauren. In the end, they managed to break. The suspect confessed that on that fateful evening he had a conflict with Lauren in the car. Lauren refused to get out of the cabin. The annoyed ex-boyfriend pulled out a gun to scare her. However, according to him, the magazine accidentally fell out as he bent down to pick it up. Connor unintentionally pulled the trigger. A shot rang out, and the bullet hit Lauren right in the face. However, the police did not believe that it was an accident. Their doubts about the truthfulness of Connor's testimony only intensified. But be that as it may, 
thanks to the persistent work of law enforcement officers, they managed to obtain a confession from the suspect about what he had done. The 22-year-old killer was arrested and placed in the Tulsa County Jail. The next task was to find Lauren's body. According to the detainee's testimony, he threw it into a container for paper waste and even indicated a specific place. This was confirmed by the GPS tracker data of his car. The very next day, a garbage truck took the contents of that container to the nearest landfill. Now the police needed to find out which landfill it was taken to and find the body as soon as possible before it disappeared without a trace among the giant waste dumps. After reviewing the surveillance camera footage, the investigators were able to identify the truck that emptied the ill-fated container. The police department sent a whole group of 30 employees to inspect 72 sorting points that served 19 waste recycling enterprises in 16 states. There was little time for the search. The detectives familiarized themselves with all the stages of the waste paper recycling process. It included several technological operations during which the body could be crushed into small parts. Theoretically, there were several points where the remains could still be found. But the probability of this was extremely small since the processing lines were maximally automated and few people worked there. With each hour of fruitless searches, the police more and more clearly realized that Lauren's remains had most likely already gone through the entire recycling cycle. However, it was impossible to stop. It was extremely important to find the body in order to study the injuries in detail and compare them with Connor's version. To facilitate this extremely difficult task, it was decided to send dog handlers with service dogs trained to search for corpses by the characteristic smell of decomposition to the enterprises. This is what gave the result. After some time, the dogs were able to find what was left of the once beautiful young woman, fragments of skin, bones, and internal organs ground by the processing equipment. DNA expertise officially confirmed that the remains found belonged to the missing Lauren.